Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are getting started with chapter 5 and so far we are covered with four chapters including the sample questions of the same. In chapter 5 we will be having four topics broadly classified into like selection of task matrix, uh, implementation of measurement, logging of the tasks and the SUT and test automation reporting. So in this chapter we are all together talking about what are the different reporting methods and how the different matrices which could be uh, useful in terms of test automation solution. So the very first thing to understand here is 5.1 the selection of task matrix and of course at the, this point we understand uh, these matrices are not similar to the one which we use for the process or the application point of view. So generally when you talk about the matrices from the foundation which you have understood just like, like the process of test monitoring invites a lot of matrix first of all. Now when you talk about matrix is any such kind of calculation which helps you to measure an entity or measure the progress of any particular activity throughout the life cycle is what you call it as a matrix. So here we do have matrices for automation tools, automation solution, which would help you typically do the measurement of the SUT or the, the tool itself, the automation tool measurement. So here the different matrices uh, are other than the SUT ones. So of course here are a few list of the same uh, people. We are actually covering some of the matrices as a very common example. Uh, the measured task matrix typically include the following external task matrix so we have just classified that into two different categories like external and internal external is those that depends on the two and internal those which depends on us so external task matrix includes automation benefits effort to build automated test effort to analyze automated test effort to maintain automated test ratio of failures time to execute number of automated test case prepared number of pass and fail results, number of false fail or false false, it's just like you know negative positive, false positive, false negative cases and code coverage, like exactly how much did it help. And whereas at the same time the internal task matrix includes tool scripting matrix, it automation code, defect, density, uh, speed and efficiency of tasks. We will be we will be understanding each one of them in detail in this particular section that is 5.1 selection of task matrix. So we will be breaking this tutorial into three different parts and you're looking at the part one right now. So we will be uh, getting started with the very first one which is automation benefit here. Of course the automation benefit is one among the important parameters to be measured at any point of time because as you adopt a new tool from the market it is really important for you to understand if the tool is benefiting your project or not. Sometimes it is possible that it might be good for one of the project but not for the other one. So you might be looking at the organization level the solutions for any kind of uh, projects which you basically access. So say for example you're talking about a test management tool then it typically becomes more important to understand if we can have a universal test management which could be applicable to any of the projects across the organization. And at the same time every time you go with the pilot project no matter when you try with a new tool or select a new tool from the market you go with the pilot project we do have the tool benefits uh, to be monitored as an, an a primary objective. So same way here, automation benefit is just not a one-time activity. It is a continuous process to keep on monitoring the benefits from the tool because you never know at what point of time you may require a switch on the existing tool. So some of the possible measures are listed here. A number of hours of manual test effort saved. So that would probably tell you how this automation is benefiting you. Reduction in time to perform regression testing. Number of additional cycles of test execution achieved. Number of percentage of additional test executed. Percentage of automated test cases related to the entire set of test cases. Increase in coverage including the requirements, functionality, structural, etc. A number of defects found earlier because of the tests. So could have been found earlier with help of the test so how much loss we have been so far so we these are just like you know comparison comparative measures which you can showcase to the organization showing that how much benefits we are achieving in continuation the next matrix what we have is effort to build automated test how much effort is required generally to uh, build automated test of course uh, when you talk about the manual testing you just have to write the test cases which are quite easy simple and easy to understand as well but when it comes to test automation you require additional skills 
like you know scripting knowledge and also to understand the architecture of the environment plus you need to also understand how the scripting control flow comes into picture and there are a lot of many things uh, additionally as a part of uh, switching from manual to automation so we include those costs involved uh, that how much effort was additionally required when compared to manual testing to do the preparation of the automation test so if that goes uh, into consideration then it would be really helpful for us to determine if the automation was helpful uh, by all means or not because there are different factors where we can say that if automation is taking a lot of effort a lot of time or maybe a lot of money compared to manual i would i we would recommend let's, let's go for some of the critical areas manually itself so we we have to have these measures uh, continuously happening uh, to determine if this is beneficial to us Similarly, uh, the next matrix here is effort to analyze SUT failures. Uh, how much effort is required to understand or analyze an SUT failure? See, when you talk comparatively to a manual test, it is easy for a tester to determine what went wrong. Because while preparing the test cases, the expected result was very simple and easy to understand. And at the same time, when you're interacting with the product while executing the test, you know what exactly happened on the screen. And it's quite easy and the simplest way to compare the expected with actual and determine a result. But when it comes to automation test uh, tools, uh, you instruct the tool with a programming or just a scripting language, and then you run the tool. Now the tool basically executes the script and instructions on the SUT and captures all the necessary information during the runtime and returns you with a result whether pass or fail. So that becomes really critical if in case it fails to analyze all the necessary information because you were not physically present there, first of all. And the second thing is when you talk about gathering the information that what was the exact reason because there are a lot of lot of parameters involved here it could be the automation tool it could be the language it could be the scripting issue it could be the crash of the application it might be a test data issue so there are a lot of factors if you do not have a proper log then of course this matrix would be uh, quite as useful for you to determine that whether we are able to analyze them correctly or not so important logging features, what we're talking about here is SUT logging and task logging should be synchronized, like for both application as well as solution. The test, test should log the expected and actual behavior. That's the most important thing to compare the result. And the task should log the actions to be performed as well. So these are the common matrices which may be uh, considered in terms of that. So at the end of part one, we are taking one other uh, matrix here, effort to maintain automated tests. Now, as you see, you know, building up the automation test and executing the automated test is so critical and so difficult at the same time. Then, of course, maintaining the automated test would invite some additional efforts. So we need to make sure that like every time we switch anything or we create a, a development piece of work and maybe tomorrow some changes takes place, then how much we need to update our automation scripts in terms of executing them again and again. So it's, it's very common that whenever a system has updated or changed with some of the features or maybe a defect has been resolved, it might require the script to be updated from time to time to meet the expected requirement or script to run perfectly or correctly on the application that is SUT. So it's, it's really important and uh, you know com complicated uh, for the team to make sure that effort to maintain the automated test is also calculated to determine that if it is consuming more time than creating the test so it might be requiring some additional effort or we can do some automation for that as well or maybe impact analysis to be improved so there are several things so a related metric uh, to this particular concern is number of percentage of tests required maintenance work because not out of 100 all the test cases need to be maintained there could be possibly 10 15 20 test cases which need to be updated and uh, that's what we need to measure and target them so when maintenance effort for automated test is known or can be derived this is information that can play a crucial role in deciding whether or not to implement certain functionalities or to fix a certain defect now that's more important which can be helpful for you that this can tell you if fixing a defect requires a lot of script to be updated then of course we would rather find an alternate to that you know this, this, that's how you decide so the effort required to maintain the test cases due to the change software should be considered with the change of the SUT as well. So that, that goes parallel.
that goes synchronized, so you don't really have to determine what to do there. So uh, that's from the part one. We do have a lot of other matrices to be done here, all executed as a part of the session. So we'll be getting back to you with the part two of this. Till then, stay tuned to the channel, and uh, we'll be getting back to you by tomorrow. So should you have anything else beyond this, feel free to comment below, team. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video, team, and happy learning.